You're right across the street from where the home invasion happened in the early hours of this morning. Police said that a, a black male forced his way into the home, 2708 North Chamberlain, assaulted a woman and then fired multiple shots at a man who was also staying inside the house. Neighbours who declined to show their faces or reveal their identities say this is not shocking to them because this is a way of life for so many in Chattanooga. Remember that these crews are on standby in case of an emergency on a city, county or state road. Also, there's no need to be out here in this type of severe weather unless it's absolutely necessary. The actual cause of the fire is still being investigated. However, they do believe the fire may have started at the rear of the building where the mother was recovered. We'll have more on this tonight in a full report. As you can see behind me, the sign says condemned, do not enter. And residents here in Ridgedale have welcomed the condemning of 2412 East Herdean Street. Authorities have told the woman who lives in this house to vacate it by tonight. It's been a tragic 24 hours here for this rural community in Lookout Valley. There are four victims involved and only one survives right now. And they're suffering from severe injuries. They managed to make it outside the RV behind me and notify neighbours and the authorities. And that happened just 24 hours ago. What we can tell you is that around 5.30 this evening, five to six shots were heard in quick succession. Witnesses said they heard screams and people running down the road just behind me here where the ambulance is. And they said that they do think that a gentleman may have been shot in the stomach. WDEF News 12's James Mahan is there. He joins us via the Live I-12 network with more. James. Protests in over 100 cities and right here in Chattanooga, McDonald's and Brainerd Road here. Over a dozen campaigners are expected in a van in a matter of minutes so that they may even enter the building and they're protesting about low wages and minimum wages for fast food workers. Members of Occupy Chattanooga as well as a number of other folks will be here later this on this afternoon. Uh, Father Brian Merritt, as, as you can see, is coming towards us, a campaigner involved with the St. Elmo foreclosures. He says that he's been working very, very hard in the planning process to make this protest a reality. There will also be a similar protest farther down the road here in Brainerd. We'll be keeping up to date on this story as it develops throughout the day and they will be here until 2pm. You've been with Scott over the last few days, in the last few hours. What's it been like? It's been stressful, but you know, I think Scott and Amy are both in a wonderful place and they feel really at peace with the decision that comes down in the end and I know that they'll be well taken care of either way. Dory, we're looking at just a couple of hundred votes, even a couple of dozen votes we're talking about. How tense is it for you folks in that room back there? A media student says he was disgusted after discovering the spy camera had a hard drive of graphic images of adults urinating at Chattanooga Billiards Club and video of children at local gas station toilets. If you went down to the woods Thursday, you're in for a big surprise. Law enforcement pulled up truckloads of marijuana plants cultivated in a major marijuana den in this secluded area of Taylor Road in Grootley Lager. We just kept digging and ended up stumbling onto a huge amount of marijuana. Grundy County deputies believe they now have millions of dollars of marijuana plants to burn. More than two dozen deputies and DEA agents have worked throughout the night gathering more and more marijuana plants and say there are so many here they're concerned they might not have enough vehicles to transport it all in. Generators to pump water out of wells and then they've piped it out to different locations where they stored it in uh, tanks and then they had it set up from the tanks on valves where they could take it to the plants individually and they, they've spent quite a lot of money on this. Local residents who pick blackberries in the woods think there may also have been deer cameras located throughout the square mile area of forest. Others are embarrassed and disgusted at the record-breaking seizure. I mean, the Lord can get them through all this if they would just get off of it and not do stuff like this. This is bad on Grundy County. It's bad for the kids of Grundy County. Local drug counsellors say this is a victory in the war against drugs and say marijuana is a common gateway drug in our region. And what happens is people start with marijuana and then a dealer says, you like this high, let me give you something else. Um, and so they're going to these dealers who are wanting to push harder drugs because that's more money for them. Um, so I, I think marijuana is it's a dangerous thing. Crews guarded the site overnight and DEA agents have swarmed the area, locating more and more plants. Trafficking of children for sex is an issue that has plagued our society for decades. Jessica Lauren Posey now faces seven years in prison for trafficking a 16-year-old through Tennessee, Kentucky and Ohio. Those in the sex industry in Chattanooga are not surprised that children this young are being exploited.
they're 11 and 17 year olds doing this? And I was like, yeah, human trafficking. Like, duh. Raven has been working as an escort for over five years and says there is a huge demand for young girls. My fetish is with young girls and that's what they want. They pay more. They'll pay a thousand dollars for somebody that's underage. As long as you're under the age of 17, they'll pay big money for you. Raven believes she can see why someone trafficked the 16 year old victim from city to city and state to state. You know, when somebody's selling you and they're taking care of you once again, if you're going to move around, you got to move wherever they move. If you don't move when they move, then you're just going to be stuck there. They don't care to leave you there. She says that it's not a case of false ages and younger pictures on the internet. All these people on there, all the little girls that you see with their face blurred out that look really young, they are really young. That's their real pictures and somebody's selling the shit out of them. But the real question is, how much of an issue is this and what's been done to tackle it? This is a demand-driven crime, a demand-driven issue. And so we, be, we have to begin societally to understand what's driving demand and how do we then address demand so that we can end the problem. Jerry and his team at Second Life added awareness is the starting point and from there a difference can be made. Raven says it's important to remember that this life is often not a choice and it can be especially lonely for those who are so young. For over three weeks David Stewart has struggled to grasp even a coke can. He says he got frostbite while being held at Silverdale Detention Centre that could leave him like this for the rest of his life. Stewart said that it was so cold inside the cell that he could actually see his own breath and there was ice on the bars. To put me down in a real cold cell. It was like almost 80 degrees up medical and when I got down to that cell they put me in a little population where there was, you could see your breath. 54-year-old Stewart, a married father of two, says his crime was possession of marijuana and he feels losing his fingers is not a fair punishment. I noticed my fingers were grey when I got out on the 17th and they were cold and numb, but a day or two later is when they, they started turning, tips up and started turning black. Stewart's attorney Gary Massey says no one deserves to suffer like this. It is shocking that a person can be treated this way in the United States and especially here in Tennessee where you know we we care about people we like to think that we care about people. Massey says he'll be working with Stewart and his family to bring about change. Make our jails in Hamilton County a safer place and especially the one at Silverdale because no matter you know if they've only committed a small misdemeanor like Mr. Stewart or if they've done something heinous Nobody deserves to be in a freezing cell. Steve Owen of Corrections Corporation of America says he is surprised by Stewart's plight. Uh, I've been with this company for nearly 19 years and I'm not aware of any incident of uh, frostbite reported by an inmate uh, or employee for that matter uh, in any of our facilities nationwide. Stewart says he hopes that those being held in our local jails across East Tennessee do not meet with a similar fate over the coming days. She's been bonded out but still faces multiple felony drugs charges. Accused of selling more than a Whopper meal, 20-year-old Courtney Morgallo of Roy Road in Ellijay could spend years behind bars. Five grams of methamphetamine, um, some jeweler bags which are commonly used to package drugs for sale, and uh, they also recovered uh, some empty uh, bags, some uh, scales. Copeland confirmed that when Morgallo was questioned while at work in this Burger King in East Ellijay, she also had Xanax pills in her pockets. Investigation indicates is that she was just utilizing her opportunity there to, to make the sales. The majority of LJ residents we spoke to said they will not turn their back on Burger King despite this controversy. Burger King is a good place to eat and drink coffee. And they got decent people that works in there. Could have got more than a burger, huh? Yeah, really. I ain't gonna get it because I don't want nothing else. <laughs> I don't make, I don't take no kind of drugs myself. The Zell Miller Mountain Parkway Drug Task Force led the investigation after anonymously being given Morgallo's first name and a description of her car and place of work. We also found that Ms. Morgallo uh, was on active probation through Appalachian Pretrial Probation in LJ and that she had a Fourth Amendment waiver. Morgallo faces charges of possession of a controlled substance and possession with intent to distribute. Now management for the LJ Burger King declined to comment on camera, but told us this is an isolated incident and Morgallo is no longer an employee.